So if you're testing it and it's working, uh, now we want to deal with this log out button. It opens up the log, the options. And in here, I want to have various stuff to show. I want to show, I don't know, information about the app or credits or whatever. And it, we're going to have a few options here. One of them is to log out. I'm logged in currently with a particular account, with a particular password. I'm currently logged in with the Bill Gates account. And uh, then I want to log out to log in with the other account. So we'll create a, a way to log out on this screen. Um, back to the code, back to the HTML in this options screen. Uh, some of this stuff, part of, uh, as I said, there's going to be uh, homework, and part of the homework of part one is to complete some of these screens. I'm not going to fill it, I'm going to leave it with stuff, but you'll be required to fill it in with some real stuff. So if I don't fill in some of those details, keep in mind that that will be part of the first homework. Uh, what I want to do here is from this screen have a way to, to sign out. So I need a button, and then uh, via the jQuery or the JavaScript, I will then actually execute the logging out. So after this stuff, uh, we'll have a button here, so an A tag, uh, logout. Uh, href, we're going to do this programmatically. After things happen in the JavaScript, move us back to PG welcome. So actually here, pound, nothing. Don't actually go anywhere. Just behave like a button, but don't go anywhere. I want to uh, go back to PG Home after we do JavaScript. So pound to nowhere. Uh, data roll button so that it looks like a button. And the important part here, uh, one of them is uh, the. Yeah, we'll do data icon as well. We'll put an icon. There's an icon called delete, which puts a little X. So this will show people, you know, clicking on this will do something. Or we've also got another one. I think it's called maybe alert. Let me check it. Alert is one that creates like that little warning uh, triangle that we see, you know, to warn you of something on the road. I think it's called alert. Um, and then we need an ID so that via JavaScript we can... Uh, have stuff happen. So btn log out. Now again, careful with these uppercases and lowercases. It might just be easiest to keep it all lowercase. If, like myself, sometimes I consistently forget my cases, keep it all lowercase and you'll have no problem remembering the difference. But then readability suffers. So in log out button, pretty simple. We've done this lots of times. A href data roll button, data icon, some icon, and then an ID. So we need to create in JavaScript an object representing this HTML. Then we will create an event handler, like we've done before, uh, and then a function, which does the logout plus other cleanup stuff behind the scenes. So once we've got that, we'll switch over to the JavaScript. We'll go back to the top where we've got our global variables, and we'll create a new one, L button logout. So back to the JavaScript, to the very top, we've got a new one here. So a comma, dollar $L, ETN logout. Equal to the dollar selector quotes, back to the pound sign, because it's another ID, btn logout. So we've got them at the top. They're global variables. They're global objects. We can use them throughout our code. Back to the bottom of our code to define another one of these uh, event handlers. This is going to be a little bit different. We've had object.submit before when we were dealing with a submit form. This one's different. It's not a submit form, it's just a button. So slightly different syntax. Back to the bottom. <coughs> this one is dot on. 
there's a generic one on on the event of x. This one is specifically on the event of submit. This one is on the event of a click, or a submit, or a double click, or a drag, or a right click. Quotes, click, on the event of a plain old click. Something that's very popular today. <laughs> On click. Now this one's also a lot simpler than the other uh, submit because the submit had to do with a uh, with a form that had a bunch of baggage built in. This one doesn't, so we can simply do function log out. None of that anonymous function capture the event to prevent default. All of that stuff is for a form submittal. This is just click the button, run a function. So that syntax here, we can note simpler syntax syntax when uh, pressing a button, a plain old button. The above syntax is a little more complex for um, having to prevent the default of a form. After submit, capture the default event, refresh, pass it to the name function, etc. So this is just a plain old simple button. We need to back up then and create a function to sign out, to log out. So function fn log out. We don't need a we don't need a, a parameter here because we're not passing a parameter into this function like we do up here. So no event there. No, we don't need event prevent event dot prevent default here. There's nothing to prevent. It's not like the same sort of submittal as before. The important thing to do here is change our screen. So we use the same syntax to reference the current screen, the current page container, colon right there, very important. It's one of the few places where you've got a, a colon floating around there. It's a pseudo, pseudo element, pseudo selector, dot page container. Method. And like before, um, we're going to change, we're going to move away from this screen to some other screen, PG, uh, PG Welcome. That's the initial welcome screen that asks you, are you going to log in or are you going to sign up? I won't specify extra options. The other extra option was a transition. If you don't specify a transition, it goes to the default. So a different animation will happen here. A fade. It will fade us from our current screen into another screen, the welcome screen. So a different kind of animation to catch their attention that they've logged out. If you wanted to, you can set this up with a confirmation first. Right now it'll do it right away. Click log out, you log out. With an if else statement, we can check are you sure you want to log out? Capture true or false and log out. We may do that. Not that complex. We'll skip it for the moment. We may do that. But let's test if this works. We want to log out. We want it to go back to the PG, PG welcome. Let's see, I'm going to go back to the whole process, refresh, let's see, I'm going to log in, 
I know I'm logged in. I see my email at the bottom. Go to options. Got a big old logout button with a warning logo. Click logout. Fades out. Takes you back to are you returning or are you new user? <clears throat> it does it right away. So you have to then do the login again. Uh, it does remember that. So other cleanup that could be done is to also clean out that that form. It still remembers what was logged in with last. So as we beta test this, we see it still remembered what I logged in with, perhaps. When we get to the point that it already remembers we've logged in, that'll probably be empty. So. I think it might be good to clear this form out. They probably logged out because they want to log in with a new account. So in addition to cha changing the page container, I want to clear that form. Before I log out, I want to clear that form. So that would be the same sort of code that we had up here. I'll form sign up, but it's actually log in. So before we change screens, dollar $l uh, form login, square brackets, zero, dot reset. If something has been typed into that form, reset it, then take us to PG Welcome so they can sign in with an empty form. Um, when you test that, you should have an empty form. That's probably what you want, although there's instances, of course, that, well, oops, I didn't mean to log out, so that's why we'll do the confirm login logout in a moment. But just to test it, I'm going to log in. Uh, log in with Bill Gates. Log in, go up there, log out, takes you home, log in, empty. So I have the other account, what was the other account? Uh, Victor with ABC, logged in, I'm logged in with the Victor account. Go back up to options, go to log out, log in is empty. So that was adding a, a reset to our logout. And as we saw here, it just logs you out. Um, if you want to build in a confirmation, are you sure you want to log out? We could do that. Um, could do it in a couple of ways. Let's do a vote here. Do we want to do a logout with if else, or do we want to do a logout with a switch? Raise your hand if you want to vote. Um, we're going to learn something new if we do a switch, or we can do something we already know with a for if else. Raise your hand. Who wants to learn how to do the confirm with an if else? You can vote more than once. Zero. Okay. Uh, vote. Who wants to learn how to do the logout confirm with a switch statement? Okay. Great. We'll do a switch. Okay, so if else has, uh, we set it up that if it's this, do that, or else, do that. The switch statement is another way to also check possibilities, but in this case it's a little bit more sort of like known possibilities. Oftentimes we can do if else for those two binary possibilities, it's this or it's that. Yes, we can do if else and then else if statements to ask more possibilities. But with a switch statement, we can have like a known set of quantities. Yes, log out, no log out, I changed my mind, and do different results. So all of this stuff right here, I don't want any of this to happen until we check the confirmation. So before that, I'm going to give myself a bunch of extra lines here, because that stuff is in the wrong place for the moment. I want to set up what is known as switch statement to check possibilities.
possibilities. Uh, switch conditional statement on certain conditions. If else is a conditional statement on the condition of finding true in the if stuff happens or false. Here's another conditional. The syntax for this is switch open close parentheses open close curly brace and switch checking if they really want to log out or not. So we're going to check something right here. And then we're going to mention the possibilities of what we're checking to then accomplish something. We have a block. If this was true, do the stuff in this block, or else it was false. So do the stuff in that block. The way the syntax works right here, we have to have case, abc, colon, aaa, semicolon, rake. Or we have a case, uh, def, colon, bbb, semicolon, break. Or we have the case, uh, uh, ghi, uh, colon, ccc, break. So you see here, it could be that the case or the result is something, so do a bunch of stuff. Break the end, don't do the rest. I check something and it's actually possibility two, case possibility two. So do one or a hundred lines, break, don't proceed. Wherever there's this break, stop processing the code. We've found a case that works. We have here three possible ideas that might happen. Maybe there's a fourth that I never thought of. So there's also a default case. And other stuff happens here. DDD, semicolon, break. Switch conditional statement to check possibilities, to check known possibilities. You don't really need to break the last one. Not really, because it's the last one just force of habit. So that's true because it's the last one, it's the end, but save a few bytes or keep it consistent. So um, the final one, these are known possibilities. So um, or a final default if you, don't, if you didn't think of a possibility. the code before the break executes and stops. Pro tip, put the most um, probable possibility first. It saves processing. If you kind of figure out which one is probably going to happen most commonly, put it first, so that the <coughs> so that the processor, the interpreter, the web browser, the, the device can find what it needs and stops, and not processes the rest. If you figure out that the most common possibility, you put it in third slot or fifth or fiftieth slot, it has to check all of those possibilities until it gets to the real one, and then it breaks. So the most probable possibility, put it first so it stops and doesn't process the rest. Okay, so that's the basic skeleton. Any number of cases, as many as we want, and then good idea to put a default to do some testing about, well, what? I didn't catch one. This case, uh, let's say we were asking... Uh, this is pseudo code. It's not real code. 
are you sure you want to log out? You don't even really even have to type this. We're going to ask a question. Are you sure you want to log out? This is not valid code. Well, we're going to have the, the way we're going to do it, we have the possibility of true, I do want to log out. False, I don't want to log out. And the way we're going to do it, we actually don't really have a third case. So I don't really need the third case, but we'll leave it on default just in case. Console log third possibility, I guess. Really, we have a true and a false in the way we're about to do it. But think about it in terms of like a high score, a game, a high score. It's, it, it gives you different rewards for different amount of points. So the case could be, you know, when the person reaches 1,000 points, whatever. When they reach 5,000 points, whatever. When they reach 9,000 points, case of 9,000 points, it's over 9,000. You'll get that result. And then eventually a default if we get to some other point. In this case, we're going to do true or false. Yes, they want to log out. False, they don't want to log out. Console log. Uh, yes, they want to log out. Console. No, they don't want to log out. We really shouldn't trip or trigger a default, but it's a good idea to have it in case. Um, this is some console output. But do you see what we're getting at? True, false, default. The console output is the console output, but what, what, what am I? getting at how should this be fixed. All of this that actually logs you out, where should it go? Under the true. So the true possibility is that, yeah, I want to log out, so let's reset the form, let's log out. Here's a trick that we can do in Notepad. You can actually drag and drop code. If you select some code, you can drop it where you need it, drag and drop. Cut and paste works the same. You can also select, drag and drop your code. You might have to fix the indenting. You can move code by selecting it and dragging it. So that form reset and page transition was outside of the switch. Now it's in the switch. When true, yeah, we want to log out, trips, reset forum, log us out. If they select cancel, which will be false, nothing will really happen. They don't log out. They've chosen not to log out. So what will happen here about the actual mechanism to uh, check log out, yes or no, there's a JavaScript method built in called confirm. There's a built in JavaScript command, plain old JavaScript command method called confirm. This will pop up. We've seen, uh, we haven't done it that much, but we've seen the alert. Right? We use alert that creates a simple pop up that says a message. Well, this one's going to be a pop up that says whatever we want, and it'll have OK and cancel built in. When you click OK, it's as if they selected true. And if you click cancel, it's as if they selected false. And there really shouldn't be a third option for default. So confirm is completed by then having some message. Are you sure? I shouldn't have deleted it. Are you sure you want to log out? So here we're making a pop-up, a confirm pop-up, asking that question true and false possibilities. That will happen, they will click they will click OK. 
So then the switch passes that result and checks. Is it a case of true, a case of false, or some other case? It would be a case of true if you click OK. So then it proceeds to move you to PG. Well, if they click cancel, nothing happens except in the console, they just clicked cancel and it doesn't log them out. Let's check that. Log in. Options, log out, pop up. Are you sure you want to log out? Now, this can be styled later. I'm going to get a pop up. No, I don't want to log out. Cancel. Screen goes away. Pop uh, console. No, they don't want to log out. Log out. Are you sure you want to log out? Okay. Yes, they want to log out. So then the true condition happens, the first case. And then it proceeds to reset the form and take you back to PG Welcome. So there's a switch statement. It's, uh, it's another conditional statement to check things on a certain condition. Uh, I've kind of done it in an interesting, slightly more complex way in that we also invoke a method to ask the question. And the result of that then is checked against true or false, whatever we know to exist. And then it goes out. Yes? So when you asked if you wanted to log out and you hit cancel, mm -hmm. where did it, did it just take you? It, uh, let me go back. It just shows, it just takes you back again to the question, not to the question, to the options screen. And you see here, uh, I want to say cancel. It's going to close this first pop-up and then cancel, because I'm going to have other stuff in this options screen, like the credits of the app and all of that. So clicking cancel just closes that box. It keeps you in the options screen, but it should give you the console app. Now, as you're uh, doing this testing, the output may become a little cluttered. If you'd like, you can click that clear, the little trash can. I find it useful sometimes to kind of clean that, to pay attention to something new in the console. So you can start to see my code new, my console new. Trash can. Chrome also has it. They've got a little X out thing, clear console. So there's our switch statement. Now, when I uh, when we uh, when we create the account, the more we beta test this, when we create the account, I would like some feedback. You know, you created the account. I would also like a way. Okay, I created the account. Let me uh, let me sign in with it. So uh, we will create a we will create create that result as well. That they uh, created the account, and then the pop up will be okay. Well, now then take me to the login or let me log in. Right here, I have to go a little bit out of my way to okay, something happened. I need to go back, then I need to go log in. I want to jump directly from creating that to the logging in. Um, then, when I log in, um, Actually, when I do the wrong password, I want a pop-up to happen there and that the passwords don't match. So we're going to deal with uh, pop-ups and all of that on the next lecture. But those are the things that we need to deal with as we as we create this, this app, all these possibilities. And we're going to make all of this part work. We're going to fill in details on options and do other things here. Um, so all of this login, logout stuff I think works pretty well. We're going to wind down the main lecture. We'll do a little lab time. General questions on what we did 
so far today. Uh, we work pretty much on this login, log out, checking passwords, all of that. Again, the passwords at the moment are plain text stored in the device. It would be better to compress, uh, encrypt them and all of that. That's a little more complex than we can quite get to right now. We also don't have a way of, I'm going to log in and I don't remember my password. I don't have a way to retrieve a password. That's also kind of complex for us at the moment. That's going to require some sort of way to let them reset the password, send them an email and all that. It's a little too complex for the moment. So there's still things to do to polish it. But we've got log in, log out. Um, so far the app, the HTML portion, in my case 114 lines of HTML, and JavaScript 114 lines also, almost. So uh, almost you know, uh, 250 lines of code. Um, and we've just done the log in, log out. We still need to do the actual magic that the app does, creating the the database and capturing the information and storing it in the database and retrieving it and editing it and all of that. Uh, and cool stuff that the device can do. We're going to set it up that we're going to take a photo of the product. I want to store the photo in, in, the, in the app. I want to do other things. We're going to have something also where we can um, send a tweet via the app, post to Facebook, all of that cool stuff once we get to that point. We're also going to need to deal with design. The, the design of our app looks really basic. Uh, next time we're going to start to look at some of the customization via uh, colors and fonts and such and other polish of pop-ups. But at this point we'll um, do some lab time. I'll put my code in the folder. I'll upload the videos. We'll, and if you need any help, call me over. General question? Okay, I'll help you right there in a moment. Any general questions? Okay, so that's it for the moment. We'll do some lab time.